So today is the day that Vorkath released. It is now in game. We are able to do the boss. And I'm going to do something a little bit different and kind of do a day of release guide and maybe some thoughts later on. So for those who just want to see how I've been killing the boss so far, we'll just go ahead and get straight into it. Weapon Poison does not work at this boss, so I've just been using Lanta and Spirit Weed Incense. I'll go ahead and scatter some Powder of Penance, and I just run it at a half hour because I'm still trying to figure out the boss, try out new and different things, which results in a lot of death. And I have just been running a Blood Reaver. I've been setting the auto cast to three, and it seems to be working well. However, you can set it to two if you want. And then just grab an Overload, Summoning Renewal, and then grab my preset. Also, if you want, you can Bonfire and grab the Ooglog Potion. Any bit of HP will help. And then we'll just go ahead and get into the kill. Now, in order to do this boss, you pretty much have to do all of the Fort Ferenthi quests, and you have to have a tier 1 botanist bench and a tier 1 uh, whatever the thing is over here for the cabin. But other than that, once you complete the quest that has the boss and you have done the story mode version, you're able to come over here, inspect the commemorative statue, and then I'm going to hit hard mode and do start. Now you start inside here, but on hard mode, once you click begin encounter, you will go straight into the instance. If you're on normal mode, there's these things where you can attack a giant like zombie thing on each of the ones or each of these little like uh, energy beams and whatnot. I forget the actual name of them. But they control certain aspects, like if you kill this one, he doesn't spawn zombies or something like that. And then I forget what the other one does. But you would kill this one just to get into normal mode as quick as possible. Run out, kill that one, and then it puts you in the instance once you click it. And real quickly, just going over the preset, I just have full necromancy gear, a salve amulet, because the boss is undead and only undead slayer items work on it. However, a dragon task happens to work and it's been counting for dragon task, so I'm not not really sure what's going on there. Day of release things always happen to have some weird quirks and features with them, so we will see how updates uh, change this. But for now, I have Undead Slayer on my gear and I have a Salve Amulet. I've just been using Grim, it's just kind of bog standard. You can use Jazz Scripture, Scripture of When, Full Scripture, whatever you really want, honestly. And then I just bring a lot of food. The new item here, you do not have to do Vorkath to get the Death Warden Nexus. This holds all of your Necromancy runes and Ectoplasm. You just need a normal insold bar, a silver bar, and a sapphire, and then you go to the tier 60 gear thing on the little forge in the city of Um, and then you can go ahead and make the Death Warden Nexus, which opens up the preset for a bunch of food, and other than that, I just have my blessed flask for prayer, I bring a portent just because I can, expensive spices to give a little bit of extra healing on the blubbers, my EOF just has the tier 70 to 90 spec in it, and other than that, it's pretty bog standard. I have rune pouches here for Prism of Restoration. And that's all there is really to this preset. So we'll just go ahead and grab an aura. I have been finding Vampirism Aura to work very nicely in making this boss. It just happens to be pretty much a face tank everything and kind of brute force it boss until some of the more... Uh, lesser mechanics are figured out and also right now during the giant mage attack that you'll see in a minute uh familiars take a bunch of damage during that attack so it is vitally important that you keep healing with prism of restoration but other than that let's just go ahead and get into a kill Alrighty, now that the kind of the gear has been gone over and whatnot what i like to do now for actually doing the kill is conjure my army hit life transfer and then command the ghost and then we go in invoke death and surge kind of go over this way and just death skulls soul sap just kind of do some standard necro rotation stuff a touch of death a basic here and another soul sap and we'll just go for a living death rotation touch of death skulls hit bloat command with the uh, sigil hit a soul sap finger blast double basic here a touch of death and Death Skulls, and what I like to do here is anticipate and run back. Let it kind of play out a little bit on that attack, and then just go back in. And here I'll just surge across. Hit another Skulls. Touch of Death. Maybe hit a couple Finger Blasts. Now, if you, ever, if you see a green shield pop around Vorkath, that means there is a Sorcerer Skeleton somewhere around here. He's really hard to spot right now. I hope they fix that later on. But here, I'll just do a couple of web specs. 
maybe command the skeleton a bit. Just kind of work on our stacks and start trying to phase him. Because this is kind of the epitome of the boss of do damage to it before it damages you. And here we'll just uh, surge away. Be mindful of that. That attack where the kind of the bones come up through the ground, that is controlled by Big Z over here. That is not controlled by uh, Vorkath. They both attack you during this fight, which is kind of annoying, but also somewhat interesting, I guess. And when he does the poison attack here, he just puts poison all over the ground. Just don't stand on it. Kind of like the stuff from, uh, uh, what's its face? The Rex Matriarchs. We'll just avoid that one. It'd be funny if you could plant that one on any either of them and it would actually damage them. But for when he goes up into flight, you just hit the extra action button and then that'll negate the big hit that you get that pretty much insta-kills you. And then I just like to wait here. I like to try and not do a living death rotation because the damage is reduced on Zamorgiel or whatever his name is. Then we'll just do a living death. A touch of death, kind of rinse repeat. Make sure our familiar can heal up a little bit before the attack. Make sure our uh, salve amulet's actually on, hit death skulls. I think if you call your familiar, it'll actually save it, because for some reason that attack really damages the familiar. Just make sure you have prisms down, it's the best thing you can really do. And just kind of do damage from here. We command the ghost again. I'll go for a threads here, and do a volley, into a soul sap, into another volley. Maybe hit another death skulls here and command the ghost. Make sure he's volmed. Go for a web spec. Go for the other web spec, or the EOF spec into the web spec, I should say. We want to be precise here. And just keep building stacks here for the end of the fight. Oh, that's the mage attack, or the ice attack. Kind of getting clapped here. The poison is pretty painful. But it went away. We were able to get Vorkath done. Now we just get on Zamorgiel. Or Zem I don't know. You guys will have to tell me how to enunciate that one in the comments. I have no idea. But we'll just keep attacking him. Make sure our invoke death is on him. And we have a living death here, so go ahead and use it. You can also div uh, divert during this fight, so feel free. I'll just damage him per usual. Kind of bleed a dive out of the way of these attacks. And then reconjure should you need. Man, the ghost, and kind of just work through our abilities again. Uh, anything uh, undead does not work on him, so just keep your EOF on for this part. Appears I did not place a, uh, what's its face? A prism. This is going to be kind of a slow kill. Also, yes, the timer is absolutely goofed up right now, so don't pay attention to it too much. I sure hope this isn't a 14-hour kill. And then once you're done, uh, or once you kill him, that's the fight over. The guard captain will come over, and then you can right-click claim loot. And then you get your chest. Now, I understand I wasn't commentating the best during that. I am not, uh, you know, 100% practice on this boss. It is day of release, and I'm not really 100% consistent with my kills yet. So you'll just have to excuse the uh, lack of commentary in a couple spots. But I'm basically just following kind of general necromancy rotations. Kind of the ones that I learned from Raziel, where I death skulls before a living death and kind of do that whole build in getting two soul sap stacks and a touch of death. So that way you can get better stacks throughout your living death. And also necromancy happens to work really well here because Threads of Fate is a very solid AoE for dealing with a lot of the minions that spawn, as well as Death Skulls bouncing around and killing everything. There isn't too much like it as far as the combat triangle is concerned. Maybe with the combat rework and G Chain on Magic will be strong here as well, or if they find a way to really implement the minions better. They do add up quite a bit. They are rather obnoxious 
this. And also the sorcerer is impossible to find half the time because he'll get hidden under the little poison splots or the uh, pink poison splots or under Vorkath itself. And it's just kind of an ongoing problem this game has had for a while. So hopefully it's uh, can be addressed at some point. But that concludes the day of release guide here. And now I'm just gonna get into some quick thoughts about the boss itself and what I think so far. I think overall, the artwork here is pretty cool. The encounter is pretty cool, how it's kind of like half snow has formed up and it's kind of the remnants of the wilderness floor and whatnot and like the forts all busted up here you're fighting to protect the fort and vorkath is right here but overall this fight i find rather obnoxious honestly it feels more so of just a tank test while doing damage rather than actually engaging in boss mechanics such as prayer flicking or anything like that the couple of special attacks that vorkath has just kind of rotate through and they're all kind of an obnoxious uh Zamorgiel just tosses out random necromancy hits on you and they line up with Vorkath so you can't really pray flick the either thus making it just a tank test really and you might be willing to make the argument that Raksha is a tank test as well but there's prayer flicking skill to that where you have to match it to the animation and the protection prayers do a lot more than just their normal amount when killing Raksha so overall if they could do something to where the uh, sorcerer is a little bit better highlighted or has a consistent consistent spawn point that would be kind of nice uh, if they could make it to where minions are a little bit easier to spot or if all minions just kind of came within a close area to where you could deal with them accordingly that would be nice i'm sure you're supposed to use this ballista a little bit more because it does hit for 10ks but a lot of the minions have over 10k hp and so you can't really one shot wipe all the minions with the ballista from the fort i do like the interaction with the ballista and the overhead thing but it also is kind of a uh, novelty as it wears off like it's cool here on release i'm enjoying it so far but i don't see this you know being a cool thing long term it's just sort of a thing you have to do and overall i kind of give this boss like a five out of ten right now we'll have to see where it goes with future updates but all of the loot is available in normal mode hard mode i think just gives more of it or a better drop rate on codexes and whatnot i also think the loot system here is kind of redundant as well like we get a chest that we open up like a clue scroll instead of opening up, up a chest in game. And I guess you could argue the lore sense of like they plundered the loot that happened to be there when you killed it, but I, I don't know. I think there should just be a chest that spawns. I think a system like this is not only redundant, but also makes doing splits for teams a lot more obnoxious because some people are going to want to stack these, others are going to not want to stack them. And you could argue that everyone's just going to do keeps and open up chests as they do it, and that's probably what it'll be but honestly i think this is just a redundant looting system and also the fact that the captain just runs out and if you miss uh the spawn and then runs all the way out here the guard captain doesn't just automatically go to your current position it's just kind of a default out to here and then kind of tracks your position so some kind of adjustment there would be nice but so far that is kind of how i have been doing uh vorkath so far i'll show you some of the other presets i've kind of been working with and also we'll just go ahead and open this up real quick see if we get anything and nothing spectacular also everything is unnoted with these chests it's really obnoxious i hope they change that immediately to where it's all noted when you open it up but some of the other presets i've been playing with uh, i have this one which is just necromancy camp i've been playing with this one a little bit which brings a hybrid swap to kind of deal with the living death timer a little bit better i also have played with a preset like this that has a melee swap for trying to nuke phase one and then just allowing necromancy to do the rest of the kill and that seemed to work out a lot better than i anticipated being that you can pretty much nuke p1 before the uh magic ice spec comes out if you get really lucky with crits and get some d claws in there this was the preset i started with and range camp i think it works well in groups where you're not getting uh focused out entirely by both of the mobs and there are some really competent rangers out there who can push damage as well but i think 
in order for range to really see the full light at this boss, we're going to have to wait for the combat beta to finish up to where you're not having to deal with the 10 and 15k hit cap. And then I think that's pretty much it. Um, this is just a normal mode preset that I was using to go with friends. It's just a mage melee preset, pretty standard uh, there as far as mage melee Brit is concerned. So you can hybrid here if you want. There's nothing saying you can't hybrid. I have tried Vamp Aura, Invigorate, Majorat. They all seem to work nicely. Some people have been using Zerk Auras and just sending it, but uh, I have not gotten to that point yet. However, I just wanted to try a bit of a different video. Also, the drops at Vorkath, I'll go over those real quick as well. If we here, the drops you get. The spikes are part of the crafting process in order to make the new tier 92 range armor. The codex is just a codex for necromancy. It is for this incantation here. And as far as I'm aware, this is just basically giving a necromancy an ability to reduce defenses on a boss. I'm thinking of this as more so like a uh, type of BSA for uh, necromancy or blackstone arrow. The nexus here, uh, you can just craft it yourself but when you get a hunt I believe it's a combination of normal and hard mode once you reach 100 kc there that's when you unlock this one and then obviously there is a pet but other than that there isn't too much the uh thing that isn't even on the log I think it's guaranteed per kill if I can find the right tab are these undead dragonhide and they make a tier 75 dragonhide armor and i think if i pull out some dragonhide here or some dragon leather i think they have to be dragon leather and i don't have any but basically you take this tier 75 armor which is really cheap you craft it into the tier 90 with a bunch of the vorkath spikes if I can find them, the Vorkath spikes. And then to make it into T92 armor, you have to take, I believe, additional spikes, some Algrim thread from the Ascension area, and a bunch of Ancient Scales. I think to make the full five-piece set, you need almost a thousand Ancient Scales, so kind of pricey for uh, armor right now. I will definitely try and get it as quick as possible to do some testing and analysis with. But for now, I'm just going to try and Iron Man as much as I can on this set. My cash deck is still down from buying Premiere. And I'm trying to get that cash stack up as much as possible in the Trillionaire series. By the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. I do a few things around here. I do guides. I do entertainment series like Trillionaire and other things of the sort. But anyways, I think that's enough rambling on this video. I will see y'all next time when there is an update for Vorkath. Or I find out some new information that makes kills a lot more consistent. But until next time, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for the next video. Peace.